hear this. Listen up, I got yeah. a story to tell. <laughs> Listen up, I got a story to tell. Hey, yo, what's going on, guys? Yeah. All right, so I want to talk to you about something. So something happened a couple of days ago that reminded me about something that happened about uh, 11 years ago. And so, well, 11, 10 years ago. Um, and so I want to talk to y'all about it. Uh, and hopefully, um, the whole point of this, hopefully this, um, you learn something from this and you take my advice on this, okay? Uh, mostly my fellas, but I'm sure ladies can deal with this as well, but let's get into it real quick. All right, so about 2009, 2010, um, Teresa and I, my wife, uh, we were not married at the time. We were just friends. Uh, we were, no, I'm sorry, we were dating. We were dating. Yeah, we were dating. Um, and she lived in Chattanooga at the time. I was in Atlanta. And so she came down to Atlanta uh, to visit. And uh, we ended up going downtown, uh, downtown Atlanta. We we're at the Underground Mall. Now, if you know anything about uh, Atlanta and the Underground Mall, um, uh, in the daytime, it's a great mall to be, a great place to hang out at nighttime uh let's let's just say if you don't know the area i would recommend you not uh hanging out in that area but by all means you grown do you anyways so we're downtown and we're walking around and having a cool time and we're just talking just still trying to get to know each other and we're just sharing stories and you know things are going great and and the love is in the air as they say i don't know but anyways so we're, we're walking around and we make this left hand turn and now it's dark now all of a sudden right it's like super dark and but we're walking and i can see a group of guys in front of us and so one of the guys is actually walking towards us now teresa is on my right at the time and for whatever reason this guy is actually on the right side as well or actually his left walking towards us so he's in a, in a sense on her side right so i see this and i just kind of you know gently grab her and just kind of pass her to this side here so she's actually on my left and he's still on that side and as he walks towards us um he whispers something right i don't know what he says but he says something and i said hey what'd you say and he goes none and keeps walking and i was like huh all right whatever and i'm a little bothered you know what I'm saying? i know he says something but i don't know what he said though but i kind of brush it off so we're walking still and we you know kept on going and we've walked a ways right we, we parked way way down there and so we end up walking back towards that and we get to the car and in her mind, we're far enough away so she can tell me this, right? Now, anyone, first off, anyone who knows me to this day when it comes to Atlanta, I get lost like ain't nobody's business, right? I, I don't know what it is about downtown Atlanta. I get lost regularly. No one else, I don't get this lost any other city, any other state that I visit, but for the reason in Atlanta, I'm always lost. Anyways, and so we get back to the car and then she says, um, we're far enough away, I can tell you now. And I said, tell me what? She goes, did you hear what he said to you? And I was like, nah, what did he say? Um, I'm not, definitely not gonna repeat what he said, but um, I'm just gonna give you the first letters of the three words he said. He goes, he called, she called, she said, she said he called you a B A N word. And I said, word? And she's like, yeah. I said, that's crazy. And so we kind of laugh it off and we get in the car and go on. So we're driving and we're talking and um, as we're driving, I'm kind of driving and talking, but I'm doing this, right? <laughs> we make a left, and she says, wait a minute, are we back? <laughs> are we back in that neighborhood? And I said, yep, I'm looking for that dude. And she sits there. She says, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to see what it is. Like, see what's going on. Like, you got something to say? Let's talk. Now, let me back up real quick, right? These guys were, it was a bunch of them, for, for the record. And I don't want to, you know, speak ill. But let's just say they were they were doing something. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were, they were doing something uh, extremely illegal, right? Let's just leave it at that. Um, they were selling some stuff. Let's, let's leave it at that. Um, so you can smell it. I saw something on the steering wheel that was black and shiny. Um, yeah. Anyway, so you, you get my point. Anyway, my point is, so we, we get back there and she says something that to this day still haunts me, right? She's not my fiance at the time. She's not my wife, but she's my lady. <coughs> and we're sitting there and I'm like, you know, and she says, uh, what about me? I said, what you mean, what about you? 
she says, so you hop out the car, you fight that guy, he has friends. What if they jump in the car and fight me? Or what if you get beat up and get shot and get killed and I'm left out here by myself? You didn't think about me. That to this day, this was like 10, 11 years ago, still haunts me. That I allowed my pride, right, to get so big and out of control that I would have blinders on and I wasn't thinking about the fact that things could go south, right? I'm not He-Man. I ain't Superman. Things could go south. And I could get shot or whatever, and she... Something bad could happen to her. Oops, sorry. So sorry. Big fuss. <laughs> Something bad could happen to her. I didn't think about that. I just thought about my pride, my ego. So she ends up uh, calling my pastor, <laughs> my elder, I'm sorry, but my mentor, and tells him about it. He goes off on me. We had a, we had a, well, should I say we had a very interesting meeting uh, the next day. Very interesting. Uh, not fun at all, but it was well needed though. I deserved it. All right. My point with that is, fellas, we have to be careful with our tempers. But more importantly, not more importantly, but just as, as, also, as well, our egos. Our egos at times can put us in positions and predicaments that could really be hazardous, not just for ourselves, but other people as well, especially those that we love. Sometimes you gotta brush stuff off, man. You gotta like realize, yo, this can be bad. It's not that serious, and then move on with life. All right, so last story. So today is Thursday. This was Tuesday. So me and Teresa, she called, uh, we and her were talking, and we decided we're going Sorry about that. So Teresa and I say we're going to meet for lunch, right? Um, when all that is over, um, I'm heading back to work. And I'm driving down this street, and there's a little car on the other side coming this way. So I'm going this way, car's coming this way. For whatever reason, right, I still don't understand why fully. I think I have an idea, but I'm not sure why. The car coming this way, it's a silver Hyundai, won't never forget it. He stops, so I'm right here. He stops here, just stops. And the road was kind of, kind of, kind of small, kind of, you know, shallow. And because his car is on this side, and so he's kind of close to my side when he stops. He slams on the brakes, and he just flings open his driver's door to the point that I slam on my brakes, and I'm like, man, like, and, and that he sees me when he does it. But brushes me off I was No exaggeration I was inches away From taking him out Like It's some final destination Type stuff Where Door opens up I hit the door Door hits him He gets pinned Into the car No lie And it's over It's, it's over after that That's how close it was And I'm 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 nervous I'm bugging And I'm like Whoa, whoa, whoa. And so I Hop out the, So he's out the car and he's kind of gets in front of his car. I hop out my car or the truck. And I'm like, hey, man, you ain't see me. He walks around his car and he's looking at the other side, the passenger side, right? <coughs> and he kind of crouches down and just looks like, man. And I'm like, hey, man. And so I'm like, hey, man, you hear me talking to you? And so I walk from the truck to in front of the car. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So he brushes me off, right? <laughs> I'm hot. I'm like, hey, bruh. And so I'm like ready to just dive in on him, right? Dude, yeah, I'm ready to dive on him. But I stop for two seconds. My brain's moving. I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm checking the scenery out. It's him and the driver. So he's the driver. There's a person in the passenger seat. And there's two people in the back, right? None of them... None of them seem concerned about a six foot, two and a half, 270, okay, 280 pound dude 
that looks like he works out is pressing on this guy. So the guy who I'm talking to isn't worried about me. The people in the car isn't worried about me. I am, it's obvious I'm hot. It's obvious I'm mad. I am steaming. No curse words, but man, they're on the tip of my tongue because I'm ready to give him everything I got in my head, everything I got in my fist. No one flexes. And I stop for a quick second and like I said, I'm looking around, I'm just reflecting on everything. And I said to myself, there's a gun here. There is, there is a aroma of confidence that could only be coming off if there's a weapon in the vicinity. Either he has one on him or there's one in the car. It's not that serious. And I say that because, and I'm not, I'm not gonna give the, the, the ethnic group of the individual, it's not that important. But like I said, I'm six, two and a half. I work out regularly, and it's obvious to see that. And the gentleman, maybe five, 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 six on a good day, probably a buck 20, does not care about me, is not concerned about me. The lady in the back seat on the, the passenger side, so the left side, my face on the left side, is looking out the window watching him as he is checking out the side of the car. I think he got in an accident or something hit his car. I don't know. There's a guy on the behind the driver's seat. His hat is on to the back. Not concerned. The other guy in the passenger seat also looking out the window. Not concerned. And I say to myself, yeah, there's a gun here. Yeah, this is in bad for me. And I just say, all right, bro. I get in the car, on my truck, I just drive off. And as I'm driving off, right, I look in the side mirror and I see him come from the other side of the car, smoking a cigarette, and he, he kind of stands, so he's behind me, and I look like this, and he kind of stands there by his car, smoking his cigarette, looking cool, just kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Flicks the cigarette off, gets in the car, they take off. And I'm sitting there driving like, whoa, that, that could have been it for me. That could have been it. It's not that serious, fellas. I don't care who's around when they say what they say. I don't care how mad you are. I don't care what the situation is. This is 2021. Nobody plays fair anymore. All those meet me in the corner and put your fist up, all them days is done. Everybody got a gun. Or they got a bat, they got a knife, they got something. No one is trying to duke it out with you anymore. It's not that serious. Just let it go. Live to talk another day, fight another day, whatever it is. It's not that serious. I think about that. I've thought about it ever since then, actually, since that day. And it was only a couple of days ago, but still it's in my head and it's like pressed in my brain that I could have flexed on this guy and someone in the back seat or even on him could have got me off him. And that would have been it. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. So it's okay to be agitated by something someone says, someone does. But there's no need to take it any further than that. Like I said, people ain't playing fair no more. They just not. I pray y'all hear me. I pray I hear myself <laughs> at the same time. Man. Hope that makes sense, man. Y'all have a good one.